How was it for the first time in your club? Yeah, it was awesome, mate. Um, I was just thinking through the week, like, it's been a while since I've been on an away trip with um, with the footy team playing an AFL game. So it was awesome just to fly over and spend time at the hotel with the boys, go out to cafes and just hang around 23-year mates and play footy. So that part of it was awesome. Then just to finally get the jumper presented by Sam and, and then play and get the win was just an awesome start to um, hopefully, yeah, pretty good year. What'd you make this feel? Of Mitch's spiel? Yeah, it yeah it's funny. one of the best I've heard, actually. Um, yeah, no, it was good bit of humour, but I think the message was really good as well. He drove it pretty home, um, drove the point home pretty well, and me and Bubba were really excited just to get it from, obviously, um, you know, he's a great coach, and he's um, welcomed us to the team really well, and, yeah, it was good to have him present it to us. When was your last road trip? Um, I think it might have been, like, round eight last year against Essendon, so almost a year. I think that might have been it. So it's obviously, I haven't had too many in the last year if I can't remember. So it was good just to get back into it and be a part of um, yeah, a travelling team again. And uh, did you notice any difference between the way the old team travelled and the new team travelled? Um, oh, not so much. Obviously, it was a longer flight, which wasn't great, but that's just the way it is being in Perth. Um, but other than that, it was just, yeah, just fun. Like, I think no matter what team you're in, you just get to going out with your mates and travel in the state and play footy. So, yeah, I enjoyed every every minute of it. Brendan Simmer has spoken about players coming into the side and just having a role and being able to fit into the system. Playing your first game, how easy was it to come in and know your role and what was required? Yeah, I think that's what's um, been really successful this year is that um, no matter who we've got in the team, it's not about the players we've got, it's about who comes in just playing playing their role. That's all it is, more about how we play. So yeah, I had a chat with um, Simo throughout the week, what he wanted me to do and it's probably a bit more, more half forward with a little bit of midfield time. So nothing I'm, you know, haven't seen before so it was good just to come in and yeah just play that role and help out the forwards and the mids when I had to so um, but yeah that's what it's all about just blokes coming in we had four players um, go out some of them pretty important to our team but it just shows that whoever comes in um, as long as they play their role we're in pretty good stead. Is it simple to say as you know Jack Petrocelli went out of the side then you have to play a similar role to him or is it because your specific traits you have a slightly different role than say going straight in for somebody? Um, obviously Petch is um, probably a bit quicker than me so he's got a few different traits but I think it's just the role so he plays that half forward role and um, JG will probably feel confident or sorry Jamie Graham will feel confident picking a handful of blokes to go play that role so luckily enough it was me this week and I feel like I did it reasonably well so um, yeah it's just not about who it is it's just about how we play. For you long term uh, fans might have seen a heap of you play how do you see yourself um, I guess ending up is it as an inside mid or who are the kind of players that that fans can sort of compare you to um, that you're trying to get to? Yeah so I, um, I prefer playing inside mid um, that's where I like, I like being around the contest and um, I love being the bloke that wins the ball and, and feeds his teammates on the outside. So um, obviously we've got some pretty good inside mids already with you know Shuey and Yoey and Sheeta and um, Jack Redden in some really good form. So there's plenty of um, boys that are already in there. So obviously um, I consider myself a midfielder but in the past I've played half forward as well and, and done that reasonably well. So happy to play anywhere um, but hopefully you know um, if need be and they need to chop out in the midfield from the half forward I'll be happy to go in there and hopefully have an impact while I'm in there. You mentioned missing a couple of players. You, you probably missed aside from JK, your three best players at the footy club on the weekend. How, how much does that make you feel more confident about this footy club and the direction you're going when you don't have Shuey, Nat Nui and Gal? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, just those names you rattled off then are just really important to the team. But um, GWS were a quality side and we managed to still get the job done. So I think it gives faith to us as players. So the belief grows, but just to fans as well, like, it doesn't matter who we play, they should get excited about new players coming in. I know I was really excited when um, you know Liam Ryan, Venables, Jake Waterman are all playing. It's just a good feeling around the club at the moment with all this youth coming through and fans should take faith um, in the selection committee knowing that when boys are coming in, they're there to do a role and they're going to do it the best they can. Could be the biggest game this weekend we've had in Perth for quite some time. The build-up's going to be quite massive. Yeah, top of the table clash. It's going to be awesome. We've um, sort of been building to a really big challenge like this, and um, which you know you can't be the best unless you beat the best. And Richmond are the best in the competition, so we look forward to that. And hopefully, we can get sixty thousand people to come and have an um, amazing atmosphere and get us um, get us across the line. How quickly did folks start talking about going from GWS into this one? When did the discussions and the excitement start to? Build? Um, well, we had our review after the game. Um, took it all the stuff we need to do and we'll still speak a bit more today. So we're still uh, reviewing the game from the weekend, but I think once that's done, um, pretty much this afternoon, will be the boys will be pretty excited about having a really quality opponent on that Sunday. They're a unique team, aren't they? And you talk about you guys have got to come in and play the role. They're, they're the ultimate 
at playing their role at Tell us just a bit about your thoughts on Richmond and where they're at. Yeah, well, that's exactly, I guess, you know, they won the Premiership last year off the back of having 22 blokes that just do what they're asked to do and what they're supposed to do. So it's not having superstars across the field. It's just having blokes that are really, really, really um, accountable and disciplined in their role, which is, I guess, where AFL is sort of going um, in the next sort of couple of years is just not relying on three or four people to get the job done. It's 22 players playing their role, and that's something we've learnt, the lessons we've learnt over the last couple of weeks and continue to learn. So um, it's going to be a really good challenge this week. You might face off against Dusty at some stage if you get into the middle. Uh, would that be something you'd, you'd look forward to? If... Yeah. Um, as a competitive person, you love going against the best, and um, he's in some unreal form. So it's going to be awesome to go against him. Hopefully he doesn't put a handprint in my chest and fend me off, but other than that, it'll be good to go against him and uh, see how we can go midfield against midfield. Can I ask about that? Can you prepare during the week for a dusty fend-off and, and will you talk about it this week? Because yeah. he has completely embarrassed some really good footballers out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I suppose everyone knows it's going to happen, so it's um, you know that the, the, fist is, the, the palm's coming your way. I guess it's just in that uh, instant having the preparation, knowing it's coming to try and do something about it because it happens so quick and he's such a powerful powerful player that it's sometimes hard to stop. So um, maybe the mids will talk about it. Um, obviously, um, we're aware of it already. So um, how much um, effort we put into talking about it, not too sure just yet. Brendan, how challenging was it when you came to the club and having to work through a few injuries and, and come back through the waffle? Obviously, coming to a new club, you would have had that excitement of wanting to play. Just tell us about the challenges coming to the club. Yeah, so um, obviously it was excitement first coming over, coming back home uh, to your own family and friends and be a part of a really successful club. So that was obviously really good. And then I uh, thought that my pre-season built up to be really um, good by the end of it. I thought I was in some really good condition, in some good form. And then to have the ankle injury in JLT1 was, um, it was disappointing because I thought I was, you know, building to something pretty good. Um, but that's just footy, I guess. Blokes go down, they have to learn how to deal with it. And um, the rehab staff here at the club was really good. Um, so yeah, you know, it was, I think it ended up being about seven weeks I was in rehab not playing, which is um, really tough considering you want to be playing footy coming to a new team. But it was good just to sit back for a little bit and just watch how the team sort of um, gelled and got the chemistry going and knew, just got me even more excited to play. So um, yeah, playing in the waffle was really good as well down at East Perth, got a really good bunch of lads down there. Um, and yeah, played a couple of games there and now just to play my first game on the weekend was awesome. Do you feel really confident now that you get a clean run of it and you've got to see out the rest of the year? Yeah, the body's feeling really good, um, feeling awesome. So, you know, you got the physical part of it and mentally I'm just, yeah, really excited about where the club's at. Um, obviously, still early in the year, plenty of games to go. So, um, no telling what's going to happen, but hopefully that can be a part of, yeah, the team going forward. You came across in a one-year contract. So what runs through your mind when you do do your ankle and you can't play footy at the start of the year? Do you start to think about that or is it in the back of your mind at all that, you, you know, you are trying to prove yourself, aren't you, this season? Yeah, yeah, obviously you want to play as many games as possible and prove your worth. Um, but I think, you know, as soon as I did it, everyone kept telling me, you know, it's it's eight weeks and there's, you know, 22 games in a year or whatever. So there's plenty of time for, for me to come back. And I think it was good just to, um, you know, really just have time just to think about how much I really want it. So seven weeks not playing footy for a guy who wants to prove himself is really frustrating. But at the same time, you just can't wait to get back. So you do everything right and come back and hopefully play some, some good footy and prove your worth. So... Yeah. Can you just talk us through that decision? I mean, not many guys change clubs and ask for a one-year deal when they could come for you know, a two- or three deal. It's, it's unusual. Yeah, it is unusual. I think, you know, this is my seventh season of AFL footy and um, I've sort of been um, in and out of teams, um, getting the same contracts over and over. So I think I'm at that at stage where I was either all or nothing. You know, I, I have confidence in my ability and um, how I can perform and I know that's there. It's just more bringing it out and proving to everyone else that I can do that and then hopefully setting myself up um, as an eagle for a long time. So going forward for the rest of the year, do you want to play footy until the back end of the year before you start thinking about uh, the future? Or oh, I haven't yeah. even thought about contracts to be honest. I'm just worried about getting back in. It's only been one game and I want to play as many as possible. So I think it's going to be a back end of the year thing. So I'm not even thinking about it at the moment. How's the competition for spots? I mean, we probably didn't think at the start of the year, the midfield, there would be that much competition. But I guess you come into the side and everyone's performing well, as you spoke about. Does it feel like that amongst the group, that there is quite a bit of competition? You've got to play well to hold your spot. Yeah, well, that's 
that's a really good thing to have. I mean, if, if you don't perform, then there's blokes that are ready to, to take your place. So it's sort of that um, inner you know, competition going on in the team where it's like you want everyone to do well um, and they want to do well so they keep their spot. So it just keeps pushing everyone up and up and the performance keeps going up. And um, yeah, like I said, boys in East Perth are ready to go. So if boys aren't performing at the top level, we've got those players that can come in and play the role. You're a couple of years older than them, obviously having been in the system for a while. Is that what you bring different to what the, the teenagers who are coming into the team are? Do you feel that you're, you're giving them a mature edge? As in I'm mature, when mature come, body? When you, when you come into the team, you're a different type of player to the, the, the other first year as well who have been playing. Like yeah. Yeah, I, I guess so. I think that was a conversation that I had with um, Adam Simpson and Bray Rawlings come over is that they need a mature body who's sort of ready to go and play AFL footy and um, I thought I fit that pretty well and they also needed a player that can go forward and impact as well. So, yeah, I think I bring that sort of mature body that's ready to go. Um, but having said that, like, boys that have come in in the first year have been really exciting as well. So it's sort of anyone's game at the moment, which is a really good spot to be in. Get Nick Nat back. What about the Gov? That must have been a bit disappointing not getting him up, do you reckon he'll get up this week? Um, pretty confident he will. Um, I haven't had a chat to Gov yet. We just came back from some clinics this morning, so I haven't had a, a chat to him yet. But I I'm pretty confident he should be OK. Um, obviously, he's a huge asset to the team and all Australian. But, um, you know, if, if he's if he's not right to go, um, Tommy Barras was unbelievable on the weekend and Scully got the job done as well. So, there's, like I said, there's boys ready to go if our stars can't get up. Mm -hmm.